He has seven billion two hundred ninety-nine million. And the cost of goods sold is greater by far or by a little. The cost of goods sold, on the other hand, is thirty-nine billion. So it's greater by a lot. And that's what you would expect, that most of Apple's costs are the cost of making or pro producing or s purchasing the items that they're going to resell. So now non-operating revenues and expenses refer to what? Well, investing in financing activities. It's non-operating. Interest expense reflects, reflects the firm's cost of borrowing. Is interest expense operating, investing, or financing? Remember what investing and financing are, okay? It, financing are the cost of borrowing money. Financing activities is a process of borrowing money or repaying debt. It's also the process of selling stock or repurchasing stock. That's what financing is all about. Investing is about buying and selling assets that you're going to use to make profits. So interest expense reflects the cost of borrowing, and it's a financing activity. Therefore, it's going to be classified on the income statement as non-operating. Um, is investment income Apple's primary business activity? Now, if this was Merrill Lynch, you would say yes. You know, Chase Manhattan, Chase, Chase Manhattan, you know, Chase Manhattan Bank. It's not called that anymore. Chase Bank? I don't know. I'm having a brain freeze here. Investment income is not pr Apple's primary business. So therefore, it's going to be classified as operating or non-operating? Non-operating. I saw one here, and someone showed me one before. It had, um, let's see, tell me if this is operating or non-operating. Restructuring cost. Hey, what is restructuring cost? What is it, first of all? Investing. No, but what does it mean? Why, why would you have a res no, uh, why would you have a restructuring cost? Maybe for something? Restructuring is a nice word. All right, it's a euphemism. What does it really mean? When I say to you, you've been restructured. Fired. What does that mean? Fired. Yeah, you've been fired. <laughs> Hi, we're restructuring you today. Pack up your things. Right? It also means that the company is reorganizing its business and it's moving people around and things like that. So restructuring cost is really the cost of reorganizing a business. And that's non-operating because you don't reorganize your business as part of running your business. It's something that you do every once in a while. Um, it's not your main your main business is to buy and sell things at a profit <coughs> so a restructuring would be another example of non-operating when retailers and manufacturers oh here's one that would here's another one um, research and development is research and development operating or non-operating is operating. operating what if Apple how does Apple make money <coughs> Anyone here like big Apple fans? I know you all like your Apple TVs. Anyone like really follow Apple closely? No? Actually, I just got a notification. They made a new Mac operating system. Yosemite? 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 IOS So a new new Mac operating system. A lot of R and D, right? That would be part of operations, having a new operating system. And the truth is that a company like Apple, let's see, it's probably coming through here too. Ah, new Mac operating system name here we go. Doing things like that is what because like my kid, my kid's fourteen years old, right? And he's such a geek. He um you think I'm a geek, you gotta meet my kid. And he's like, oh boy, there's an update from my iPod. And he's like all excited and stuff. And it's like a really big deal to him. Like he, and they're like, call his friends. Like, hey, there's a new update from my iPod. And look at this. I got a new feature here. They fixed that bug. Oh boy. And it's like, 
I mean, when your kid's 14 years old, you'd rather he be into that than other stuff. But it's, um, it's kind of funny. So people like, but that's how they make money. The truth is by revamping the product and making it, keeping it exciting looking, they're going to have an iPhone 6 now, right? They're going to have the iPhone 6. And all these people are going to be all excited. There's going to be pictures on the web of people waiting online for it to come out so they can be the first ones to get an iPhone 6. And then they pay all this extra money for it. And it just does email and answers you, you know, you can talk on the phone. <laughs> and it's, it's the same thing, but people make a big, so that's part of your business. People will pay extra money for that. You know, they want that iPhone 6. Whatever, I don't know what they could do differently that would make it better, but retails and manufacturers sell inventory, it's going to be revenue. But when you sell property, plant, equipment, it's going to be a gain or loss. And that's an important distinction to know. Revenue is from operations. A gain or loss is not from operations. So for Apple, non-operating revenues and expenses total, we got to figure this out. And I will use my iPhone to do this. Where is it? Revenue, non-operating revenues and expenses. Huh? So that'd be the total of all of these items here. It comes out to be 155. Now, provision for income tax is income tax expense. Most companies call it provision for income taxes. Sometimes you'll see something called income tax benefit. This is pretty cool. If you make money, the government takes a share. You know, you pay 34 to 39% taxes on it, let's say. The government takes a share. But did you know that if you lose money, the government will give you back money? It's called an income tax benefit. So if you have a loss, the government will absorb part of your loss. And it's done this technical way. You can't always take advantage of this, but you often can. So you may see companies with an income tax benefit as opposed to provision for income tax. That would usually be a case where the company lost money and then they got something back from Uncle Sam. Non-recurring items are things that are unusual and infrequent. They're things that the company does not do every year. So an example of an unusual item would be a discontinued operation. If you cut off, if you close or you sell a piece of your business, you can only do that once. So that's considered to be non-recurring. Likewise, something called an extraordinary item, they're very, very rare. They almost never happen. An example of an extraordinary item would be a, um, a government expropriation of your assets. So let's say you have a casino in Cuba, and then Cuba, there's a revolution, and the government nationalizes your casino. That means they take it away then the loss would be considered not an extraordinary item. Um, a major hurricane, a major flood, like we had Katrina or um, Sandy, is not extraordinary, by, according to them. But that would be non-recurring. Non-recurring items are very rare. So Apple's average income tax rate, how would we get that? Let me just pull up the calculator here. Apple's income tax rate would be the provision for income tax, 4527, divided by income before income tax, 18,540. 24.4%. Which is actually kind of low. Non-recurring items are items that occur when? Once. So PepsiCo sells off Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, and KFC. Discontinued operation. 
And in fact, PepsiCo used to own them. Due to global warming, the tundra melts in Barrow, Alaska, resulting in flooding an entire factory and closing it indefinitely. They said that it's extraordinary. It's not really extraordinary. And just so you know, IFRS does not allow um, extraordinary items and has a narrower definition of discontinued items. Just so you know. Income statement reports the results of operations as of a certain date or over a period of time. Period of time, usually a year. Companies always report a year. Many companies also report income statements for a quarter, every three months. Discontinued be an item that happens really once over the lifetime of a company. Extraordinary item is something that um, you would never ex even expect to happen. It's a good question because it doesn't really explain it here. So discontinued operations usually is when you take a piece of your business and you close it or you sell it. Extraordinary items is usually like some kind of disaster or something. Yeah. Anything involving like eminent domain would be considered extraordinary. Anything involving what? Eminent domain. <coughs> um, it could be, yeah. It could be. But um, it's so. Teresa Henry and I, I don't know if you had anyone here had Henry. Teresa Henry and I, we did some research to try to find extraordinary items. And we found out of 16,000 public companies, and I think it was 2006, we found seven extraordinary items. And one of them, it turns out, it was from Katrina. I think it was from Katrina. Maybe it was 2008. Um, one of them turned out to be a mistake, and they had to change it. So extraordinary items almost never happen. And the ones that did happen were really weird. Income statement accounts are listed in alphabetical order, order relationship to primary business activity in no particular order. Yeah, if you notice, we start off with the most common items like revenues and expenses, and we end up with really weird stuff like non-recurring items. So the income statement works its way down. This is the core of the business here. How well can you buy and sell computers at a profit? Now, if you include operations, op other operating expenses like here, then we get a little wider because now we're including things like R&D and selling expenses. If you include this stuff, then we're getting even wider. And then these items, non-recurring items, are just really strange items that you might as well just ignore. So these are different ways of looking at the company. How well can you buy and sell computers at a profit? What if you take into account some of your other expenses and so on? Therefore, what's reported at the top? Operating revenues and non-recurring items. Operating revenues are going to go at the top and non-recurring items are going to go at the bottom.